We'll do another example of a multi-loop circuit now, where more than one circuit equation needs to be written down to solve for all the currents throughout a circuit system. In this problem, we want to solve for the three currents, I1, I2, and I3. And what appears at first blush complicated about this problem is that there are two batteries, and they almost look as if they're trying to work toward against one another. They both have a positive voltage point, pointing in the same direction. We're again going to use our Kirchhoff's Laws methods and basically blind this, blindly solve this out. One thing that's often difficult to do is if you were given these three currents to solve for and we're not told what direction they, they, uh, they flow in, it's not always easy to know or have an intuition around which directions the currents actually flow. One thing you can be assured of, though, is that you can basically plop down an arrow in any direction you want. Suppose that you might have intuitively thought I3 moves to the left, or you might have intuitively thought I1 flows upward rather than downward in this picture. You can go ahead and do that as long as you're consistent in the equations that you write down as a result. It's like having a coordinate system in Newton's laws and then making sure that your forces point in the, and have plus and minus signs in accordance with that coordinate system. All you want to do now is just draw currents in some direction and then make sure the signs correspond to the equations you wrote down. So I'm going to draw a couple different loops here. Let's take the loop that's over here on the left. Again, there's many loops that you could draw through this circuit, but we'll just consider one complete uh, loop. We go through the battery, through resistor 3, and through resistor 1, and back to the battery. The equation for that will then be V0, because it's a voltage in, are added to the circuit, minus I3, R3, because that's the voltage drop as you go uh, clockwise around the circuit through R3, minus R I1, R1, because that's the voltage drop through R1. There's another loop I could have drawn, which uh, is going counterclockwise through the left, uh, the rightmost side of the loop of the circuit, and that goes through the second battery, through a resistor 2, and through resistor 1. In this loop, the equation will be V0 minus I2, R2 minus I1, R1. In other words, all the voltages added into the circuit loop equal all the voltage drops out, coming out of the circuit loop. There's another loop I could draw all the way around the extreme outer perimeter of the circuit. Or another equation I could write down is the junction equation. That is, at the very top here, where these three currents meet, I know that I2 plus I3 has to equal I1. That's the two currents coming into the loop, or the junction, uh, have to equal the one current coming out of the junction. Now, what appears on the left side and the right side of this equation is totally dictated by the arrows that I wrote down. Because of the way I uh, drew, the, drew the arrows, I3 and I2 represent currents in, and I1 is the only current out. If I'd flipped any of these arrows, then I would have had to move uh, some of these I's over to the other side of the equation. Now I have three equations and three unknowns. The three unknowns are I1, I2, and I3. I'm going to begin by inserting equation number three into equation number one. This allows me to say, well, uh, I'm going to have a new equation for number four, where V0 minus I3, R3 minus I1, R1 is going to become V0 minus I3, R3 minus the sum of I2 plus I3 times R1. Basically, I'm trying to get rid of uh, I1 throughout. I'm also going to do that into equation 2. I have V0 minus I2, R2 minus I1, R1. But that becomes transformed to V0 minus I2, R2 minus I2, I3, uh, I2 plus I3 times R1. If I subtract equations 4 and 5, the V0 will cancel, and also the term with I2, R1 will cancel. And I'm left with an equation I3 equals R3, I3, R3 equals I2, R2. Or I can cast that in terms of I2 is written in terms of I3. It's I3 times the ratio R3 over R2. Now I can put this back into equation 4. And I get V0 minus I3, R3 minus I3, R1 minus I3, R3, R1 over R2. Or if I factor out all the I3s, I have V0 time equals I3 times that ratio there, where I've put everything over a common denominator of R2. So these things in the, that were in the middle, just R3 and R1, I had to put multiply them by R2 in order to have an R2 down the denominator. This allows me to write that I3 is V0 R2 divided by R1 R3 plus R2 R1 plus R3. 
now that I have an expression for I3, I go back to my uh, expression up here that says that I could write I2 in terms of R3, or I3, and I get I2 is V0 R3 over the sum R1 R3 plus R2 times the sum R1 R plus R3. And lastly, we use the, ju the junction equation, I2 plus I3 equals I1, and I get an expression for I1. That was a lot of algebra, and so it's again useful to do some limiting cases just as a sanity check. If I3 if R3 goes to infinity, I would expect that I3 would go to zero because no current would be allowed to pass through that part of the circuit. And I would expect that I1 and I2 are equal to the same thing because I'm going to have a one circuit loop type circuit. And I should expect to see it just be V0 over the sum of the two resistances because I have just now uh, a single battery and two resistors in series. On the other hand, if R2 goes to infinity, then I expect I2 to go to zero, because no current can pass through that part of the circuit. And I expect I1 and I3 to equal the same thing, V0 over R1 plus R3. If R1 goes to infinity, I expect the two batteries to work against each other and all the currents to go to zero. If R1 is infinity, there's, nothing, there's no current that meets and flows down through it, and the two batteries uh, apply their voltage in the same direction. It'd be good now if you can confirm for yourself that our equations accomplish these sort of intuitive ideas I just expressed. These are the things I think should happen, but then we have to check that our algebraic expressions actually do those things once we start pl plugging in infinities or zeros or what have you. And then you can just verify for yourself that we got all the arithmetic correct.